Um, to me, this whole concept of getting people together that aren't necessarily related by blood and figuring out ways that we could live together um, with common purpose into the future is just dynamite. Like This, this is where it's at. So uh, experiments, uh, progress in this nature, of this nature is just crucial for our society. So um, that's the importance of the topic at hand, and we'd really like to welcome you. I think everybody's been excited to, to hear what you have, have to say about this. And there are, I mean, it, it was, the complications of things, so we do have some questions. Okay. Do, you, do you want things to sort of go on towards the end, or as we go? Should we save our questions to the end? And let it would be probably better. Okay. Just Unless we sort of can't understand yes. for some one reason or another what's going on? Yeah. And then interrupt. Yeah, if you want to take notes, that would be nicer, I think. Okay, so save, save questions, yeah, for, the questions for the end. Yeah, save questions for the end. And then, um, the in terms of the overall, I think the big question is, one of our questions, well, maybe, uh, can I ask my question at the beginning then? <laughs> <laughs> you should have asked me that before I just went home. What is your question? Well, it's just it's sort of the definition of an echo village. That was sort of intriguing. Is that covered in your presentation? No, I'll start with it. Ah, uh, all right. And it's from Jan. It's a very nice uh, definition of uh, what the uh, echo village is. Okay, well, well, don't let me interrupt you anymore. No, that's okay. <laughs> so, my name is Leonie. Uh, I grew up in an eco-village in Quebec. My parents moved uh, in Quebec. I was four years old in an eco-village, and I have my whole life in an eco-village. Now, I live in New Hampshire. Uh, we start a sister community in New Hampshire in 2003. Uh, I live there with my husband and my two kids. Uh, both Eco Village have their own school, um, and I'll show you more with my presentation. So um, thank you to have me here. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be here. Um, Yay. If you need me to speak slowly and you don't understand my French accent, just maybe, maybe no. <laughs> a little louder. Louder, okay. yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay. So what you see on the screen right now, you see a picture of uh, the eco-village in Quebec and on the bottom is the, the sister community in USA. So many people probably ask why you want to move in an eco-village. Well, are we people that are thinking like inside the box? Mm -hmm. uh, is that why we, we, th we think that every everybody else thinks just inside the box and we, we need to go out, we need to think outside the box. So, well, where we are now, what we have to do, uh, what my parents decided to do in 1984, before they moved, they were thinking, well, we need to think a little bit outside the box, we need to do something else, we want to create something special for us, their children to grow in, they want to create a school, they want to, to do something for us. So um, they joined together a group of parents um, and uh, with the founder, they create the eco village. So that's a department, like innovation, starting an eco village. <laughs> so that's the nice uh, description from the uh, Gen Eco Village. I think it's it's a nice nice way to, to say what's an eco village. I can read it to you, but I have a hard time with some words in that, but if you can read it. An eco village is an intentional or traditional community using local that's the word I have. Participatory <laughs> and cute processes to holistically integrate ecological, economic, social, and cultural dimensions of sustainability in order to regenerate the social and natural environments. So I think that's something also that's really connect uh, the uh, community living or eco village living uh, in permaculture because it's an holistic way of living and to respect also nature. So this is our founder. Our founder is Michael Dinov Uh In 1983, uh, he was a formal educator um, in a school, regular school, and he decided to start um, a summer camp with children. So 
a lot of children, <laughs> a lot of parents were interested to send the children in that uh, summer camp. He was fortunate to have a piece of land that was lent to him uh, in our north, and he just start uh, this nice summer camp for children. So in that summer camp, the children were like allowed to play uh, freely in nature, connected with all those elements that's so important, uh, learning um, to respect all living things that's living around us, um, connecting, bonding within each other, team group, socialize, There was a lot of volunteer also for that summer camp that come and help. Uh, that young man is 18, is still living in the eco village, is now 40, 40, no, 50. <laughs> it's a bunch of kids that were in the, in the summer camp. And after that summer camp, well, what happened is that the children, they didn't want to go home. They didn't want to go back to school. They wanted to create something special with Michael. So they told Michael, well, we want to create something. So Michael told them, well, you have to convince your parents, because I need them to be able to build that something. So that's what they did. So in 1984, we create, uh, we start the Eco Village in Quebec. So our mission is to develop an Eco Village that gives priority to education. And education is not only for children. When you decide to go uh, to enter in a, a big, uh, be a member of that community, you need to, to be ready to, to learn and to learn about yourself. Uh, and sustainable development based on respect on all living things. So our eco village is the school. Mm -hmm. I put an arrow because that was my sister. I was too young to attend that, uh, that summer camp. That's my older sister, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Marian. So in 1986 to in 1987, we start to build our main community building in the Quebec. It was a big construction, and all the people there, it's all members of community. So we did it by hand ourselves. It was amazing moment. I remember being a small little girl running in those like <laughs> the floor into the snow. Yeah, it's a great moment. So in both Eco Village now we have our own school. And in the in our um, idea of of teaching, we like to teach compassion about um, every different religions that are teaching to the or follow in, in this world. So we're not teaching like the actual uh, religion itself, but more like the, the whole um, principle that's behind it, like the value of it. So when the children will grow and they will travel, they will have a, a bigger like compassion for everyone. So we create a lot of activity also with different like ethnic group. <laughs> doing festivity with children to teach them to accept those religions. The two first boys are my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the great all uh, of our community building in Quebec. So we have our elementary school. We teach children. <laughs> I have a few pictures. So people are really, uh, not people, children, are really uh, connected with nature. We try to do as much as we can end on activity to connect the curriculum with the actual project. So you can see they helping build small, small uh, cabins. Martial arts. And we do have a high school. Our two graduate from this year. <laughs> and we don't have a lot of children, so we have not a lot of graduate on this time. They were very proud. 
We also partnership with different eco villages in the world. Uh, this group of uh, teenagers are from an eco village in, uh, in uh, California called Ananda Village. And our children, uh, our teenagers this summer will, will go to Ananda having like a summer camp every day. So we really try to, to, to get uh, our children to go out and also to receive some, some of their children in our, in our school. So from that we are at, uh, at our third generation in the eco village. So uh, my parents moved there. I grew up there, and now I have my own children. And all those young adults, as you can see, they are the, like the, the leader of our uh, businesses. Now in Quebec, uh, we have seven acres of property. Eighty members live there, and the the arrow point our community building. So the sister community, uh, we moved in 2003 in New Hampshire. We do have now 315 acres of land and 35 uh, active members are living there. We grow uh, on three acres of land, food. We have two acres that are full, two, two, three acres for hay. The rest is forest and building. Some pictures of our beautiful view. Numbers. Actually, you can see uh, on your left, on the top is Luke, is our main gardener there, is a full time. Vanessa, his wife, is a part time. Pierre is a part time too, on, uh, working on the farm. And the young uh, lady there is uh, one of the intern from France we have on the farm. So we offer a program to our learning center. I will talk a little bit about it uh, later in the presentation. We do have over 500 shiitake-like. Uh, produce a lot. Uh, we also do uh, one, one cap mushroom on uh, wooden mulch. We have over 400 solar panels on our land and that produce over 98 kilowatts. So every house are completely self-sufficient. When it's all sunny, all bright, we can like run on a, on a solar panel. Uh, those systems are attached to the grid. So what, what happened is we got rebate, like we got credit from it when we produce over what we, we consume. And that's a, on the right hand side, it's a, a pool, crown edu pool, solar edu pool, uh, with a salt system, and we do have a jacuzzi inside that too. Mm. So, in community, when you have a project, well, you gather your idea together, pull your money together, and you can, that project could happen faster than if you are alone. And your husband. <laughs> so I can see that an eco village is like an ecosystem. So the land is really connected with all the, with the members, and I have the finance because you cannot do nothing without finance. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that the eco village, the city ecology eco village, something that it's one of our strength is we have our own business that supports financially the eco village. It's and the eco village is not a non profit. We are not waiting for grants. We have non profit, but it's not the eco village itself that is supported by by those grants. So it's a little small, but City Ecologique, you can see all the businesses that support City Ecologique of New Hampshire. So we have two corporations, Kiox International, it's a international all Sailor di distributor. We import product from different country in the world, and, and we we sell to the store. So we all sell. So we have a, a group of uh, sales rep on the road all year round, and uh, the the sales <coughs> to the store. And when we we start Kiops International in Colbrook, we start. Uh, 
It was mainly the member of the community that wa that were working for Kiops International. Now we are we are here over 40 employees from the surrounding area. So it's a great asset in the North Country because the, the economy is struggling a lot. <laughs> There's uh, Smart Energy of New England, it's another uh, businesses that we have. We, he sells, it's a young adult uh, from the community that grew up in the community, starts that, that business. He sells a solar panel and uh, with a biomass heating system. Uh, he do big installation, uh, he did uh, a few in Bahamas uh, on island, completely upgrade island, based with solar. Mm -hmm. And when you go up to the street, you uh, cover my and share every solar panel, you, you can see it's, it's in the install. So there's a lot. We have uh, three non-profit organizations. There's this, the school itself, the learning center, and uh, we create a cooperative for the eco so City Ecology Co-op. <sighs> Let's to show you more picture. So that's what represent the member, our land. And that's Kiops International Warehouse. So to get to our structure, I try to, to do some design, make you understand how it's how we work. So the our social structure is quite simple. So we have the member. And the member elected an uh, administrative board. The administrative board is really uh, meant to to overview the well-being of its member. Okay. So in in the board we use uh, nonviolent communication for sure, and we do uh, take our decision with consensus at eighty percent. Then we have a monthly uh, members assembly where all the members of the community are me meeting and uh, we can share if we have a project we want to do or we have some issue we want to discuss. That's the place where we discuss those things, those issues. What we have uh, socially, what we share, we share a community lunch, we share uh, accommodation, like we have a pool for everyone. <laughs> We have a jacuzzi, we have tractors that are taking care of our roads. Um, we share like laundry, room, whatever. So some facility we share it together. Uh, we, sh uh, we have a multi-generational environment, so we have elders, we have children. And we do um, our uh, monthly assembly. So as I told you, the power of community makes our visions become a reality. So every project would become a reality faster because we work together. Other nice picture. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> she still lives in Quebec. <laughs> we can care, my son, my husband, and my youngest son, and me. <laughs> so after that, we have the finance community. The finance committee is built with one representative from each businesses. So that finance committee will process all the, the, the project or the request any members would have. And then uh, they will sort and they will talk about it and they will see with if we have enough money, if it's possible, is it feasible, and if they are, if they, when they have a solution, they will bring the solution to the assembly, the member assembly. So nothing is taken just from the finance committee. It's always talked with the other member afterwards. So it's a process. <laughs> That's uh, the installation uh, Smart Energy of New England did in Bahamas. Okay, so our financial members' requirements. So we have a fee. If you want to become a member of the community, we have a monthly fee that we have to pay. Every adult has to pay the monthly fee to the cooperative. Uh, we pay for our rent. 
because um, I will show you later, but the, our piece of land we have there, the tree 15 acres, is three lots, and it's privately owned by three members of the community that have been like voted by the member of the community, not only but because they were cute, but because they have like the, the credit for, for to go to the bank and purchase the, the piece of land and the loan to build something on it. Um, so we have a round to pay to those three uh, people. Uh, if you want to have it, your home car, you need to pay for it. And we have a tuition if you are a parent, you want to send your children to the school, we have a month, monthly tuition to pay. Summer picnic. Mm -hmm. So that's the, we have a mechanic for the community to use. Um, also, I want to show that we have like big equipment. This truck is old, but it's still running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and are taking care of our lives. So that's for the school. So how it works for our land? It's an home owner agreement. So the three main owner that owns those three property, they are under the, our home owner agreement that we have made together all the community members. And if ever those three owners has an idea or they want to build a garage behind their house or whatever, or I don't know what, sheep shed or whatever, <laughs> they need to bring it to the assembly. And after that, if all members at 80% are agreed, they will do the project. But nobody is, a, those three a land owner cannot like build whenever they want, so they cannot like just sell the land. There is something that they need to get through before they, they take any decision. On so that's uh, just uh, to let you know that the, our learning center, that's a little bit what I, I'm taking care of right now. Um, we offer a um, program um, to young adults, uh, also to children, to family, to French people who wants to practice their French because we are French Canadian. Uh, we offer a farmer training program on the farm. Uh, also an eco-exchange program that's more connected with the community living uh, experience. Uh, we do also educational tour on our facility, on our property. Um, we try to do workshop. Last year I tried to do workshop. It's really hard for, for us to get people up to Colebrook mm -hmm. in this area. It's a very big challenge. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm here today. <laughs> I'm trying to get the words out, like spread the words out. So I'm working on it right now. Uh, I, I think Eco Village could be a very nice like educational hub because it's a living place. Like people just come and they could feel what it is. They could not just be tea taught, uh, but they could like live it really. So so that's why I'm here. <laughs> so. I return to that box because actually I don't see ourselves as people who think in the box or think outside the box. Because you, you've seen like all we are doing is like it's like a balance between like the extreme like capitalism and the extreme uh, sustainability. Uh, <laughs> so I think what we try is, is to keep the balance. Um, it's also a way we find to keep the harmony. Because sometimes going in extreme brought just like conflict. So that's the way we, we try to, to, to stay in the middle and try to get a, a little bit of both worlds. So this is uh, something, it's for you. If it's something you're interested Jen is the global. Uh, Eco-Village Network, um, it's a platform where Eco-Village could register and be part of. Jan create a group per region in the world, or not region, but the, I don't have the words, but there is a Jan Europe 
There's a gem for the Asia and Oceania. There's a gem for Africa. Casa would be the gem for South America. And Jenna would be the gem for North America. And there's a group of young people that create next gem. It's more like young adults that want to do something and they want to spread the word about eco-villages. So in gen, what you can find is people could be like a kind of a consultant for you. If you want to create a project, you can go on their website and you can see there's, there's people, there's some resource that you can like go, go find your answer or you can make those people come to your place and do some, some consultation for you. There's also a FIC or Fellowship for Intentional Community. Um, if you're looking for any community, go on that uh, website. It's a directory, it's awesome. Uh, it, it's a list of many, 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 many community around the world. Uh, it will let you know about their, their social structure, um, Usually you can also know how they welcome or they are not welcoming new members. So that's a nice place to, to get to know more about eco villages. And this is a quite new, but you probably know uh, the woofing movement. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit like woofing. They try to start a movement for people who are interested to go uh, to have an experience uh, more in sustainability, but they try to target what are your needs. So when you register your organization, you you let uh, people know what you are doing, what are your your mission, and whatever. And the people who wants to have an experience of working experience or exchange, they will go on that website and they will will tag exactly what they want to, to have as an experience. So they try to make it clearer for people, yes, and, and also networking with, uh, with many different organizations. And that's it. That's our two communities that are gathered together. We try to have uh, at least two gathering, both community together in Quebec, one for Christmas and the New Year and uh, one in summer. We just did the, in the 4th of July weekend, we just did our summer celebration. Uh, we do a volleyball tournament as well. <laughs> we had over, I think we had over six different countries that were represented at that uh, volleyball tournament. It was, uh, it was great, it was awesome. Um, so, thank you. Yeah. That's <laughs> Are you open for a couple questions? You want me to go here? Wherever you want to be. Can you show me that first slide again with the definition? <laughs> so while uh, she's finding that, is there any questions for the <clears throat> Do you have openings? Currently, in either Quebec, well, the question is, how does a U.S. citizen get to stay in line in Quebec? Uh, your question is, is if a U.S. citizen could go in Quebec, visit, or to stay. become to stay, mm -hmm. uh, if you're willing to go through the process of uh, becoming a, a resident and then or having a visa and becoming a resident and becoming a citizen, right. yes, okay. but the community won't pay for that. Mm -hmm. But, but yes. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I'm curious about the financing. Yes. I mean, the people who live in your community, do they have jobs that are then, I like, think everybody has a job, but not in the community. Well, in the, within, uh, every member works for the, our businesses. One of those businesses. Yes, yes. Okay, so... In order to be a member of the community, you have to have an ability to work in those businesses. Not necessarily. Okay. So, so far, it's it's how it works. But if you have your if you have a job, or if you the, some people just work online or on the, at home, or you could work as. I mean, you have teachers for your school. Yeah. 
And are they paid then by? Mm -hmm. By the tuition. By the tuition. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. So if you're having trouble getting people to Coldbrook, why don't you get your sister community to come down? If you're doing both of them, both of your reunions in Quebec. <laughs> Yeah, that's my, yeah. We we could have people from the community. It's not the, it's not the what I was. Uh, the general no, I I know. It, I'm it, just it was more like having having either new members joining, but it's a process. Like it's not like you you not become a member of a community like like clicking or bringing some money, put it on the table and say I'm a member. No, that's not that's not that's not you. That's not you. Yeah, you, it needs at least, I would say, three three years. Mm -hmm. I would say, like, you know, as a process. And you need to feel like connect with the other member as well. Mm -hmm. That's been like 30 years. We're almost like brothers and sisters there. I don't say this is impossible, but it's a process and you need to give you some time and give some thanks to the, the actual members. Yeah. Yes. I just wondered if you had very much of a turnover, like people leaving or coming in. Uh, I, I would say usually it's the younger that wants to live, like the young adults sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like, I would say, 35% will leave. The other wants to to get involved in the, either in the businesses or, or in the garden and wants to continue there. But so far, the, the young adults that are living, they have no problem like either finding jobs or go back to school. Or, um, do they ever come? Do they come back to the Yeah, actually, yes. Like this summer uh, celebration, we had a couple of like people that were at leave like maybe ten years ago. They have now children, but they, they came back for the celebration. So we, we are we keep good connection with the people that are living in the community. It's not it's not a prison. It's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What is residential life like? Is it is it communal or are there single family homes? Okay. Uh, the it starts very commune, communal, like you said. And we have all my parents needs to to sell the whole house. We needs to fit the whole family in one room. So that that's for a couple of years. But right now we have like small apartment for families. Um, we. We think that it's a nice uh, way to pursue our community life because sometimes it can get very intense when you are all every day together taking the same meals together. So now we have like a small apartment for families, for people, uh, for couples. We don't have a private apartment. Like it's more for families with children. Uh, but we have new addition probably next summer that will be built for just couple or single person that wants to have their private kitchen or they wants to have. So right now the people could like cook, like the family could cook for their own. Uh, but if they feel like to be in a community or they want to join another group, they could go over and cook. We have like community kitchen within those buildings. So we have like a small apartment, but also community uh, space. Yes. You just mentioned couples and families. How does, say, you and your husband, was he already a member of that community or did he come in? How does that process work? Uh, you, you mean if I was a member and he wasn't? Yes. 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 Yeah, well, it's a process for every, everybody. We have a young adult that are dating right now, other young adults that are not staying in the eco village, and so far it, it works. Okay. Until the time, sometimes they decide to move in, or that young adult will decide to move out, and it's not a problem. Life is life. <laughs> you need do, to do they have to. Is there an interview process? Do they have to be approved by a yes, committee? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. It's all the process that then it's last like three years. And if after three years you decide you want to become a member, official member, then yes, you, you have to go in front of probably of the assembly, and member assembly, and ask for your residential. Yes. 
Um, I have a question about um, fees and finances. Mm -hmm. So what is the co-op fee? The, like how much is it and what is the rent range that you... Well, it depends very, yeah. the range, range it would depends on what kind of apartment you have. Yeah. So the, it's, it's really depends, it could vary to 250 for the rent, but uh, for the co-op it's more expensive, it's 450 A month a or month. a month, yeah. A month, okay. yeah, and the tuition for children is 300 mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 300 a month for school? Yes. So that's, and how many months out of the year is that for school? It's all year. 12 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so 3600 for tuition for a year. Yeah. So one year. Yeah, it's not the cheap. Uh, no, but it's not, it's it, not it, super expensive. Yeah. I mean, Plymouth is like 7000 <laughs> for like eight months. Mm -hmm. So, yes. If, so the money that people make with their job, mm -hmm. is it theirs or is it? Yes, oh, okay. it's there. So it depends what you have. You decide if you want to have your own car. You pay for a car. You decide for the the fee that you have to pay if you want to be a member is the co-op fee, and then you need to pay for to stay somewhere. <laughs> food and everything. I mean, food. Food. You buy your own food or no? Yeah, the co-op, the cooperative is for we have a bulk uh, food uh, buying group. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all the services that the community is. Mm -hmm. Yes? Do you have a hospital in the community? In the community, no. We have uh, people that are not nurse, but that are good. And we have uh, employees that work in kiosks that we have very good connection, and we call them when we need it, <laughs> like some tip. But we have good doctors in town, and we, we do have uh, health insurance that, for people that are working for kiosks. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks so much for answering as many questions as we seem like we can come up with right here. <laughs> well, I do have I, Yeah, I think, I think we do have a couple, but I'm sort of giving you a little breath. So we've been hitting you pretty hard. But um, in terms of the leadership structure, mm -hmm. you, you have this assembly. Yes. And so who takes care of business at the assembly? Like, who's making sure... People are there, minutes are taken, the facilitation and orchestration of these sort of meetings, like how <laughs> you do <laughs> There are some people from, uh, from the, the administrative board that okay. are in charge of the well-being uh, of the member, and those people that are voted by the member, the other members, are... Men uh, that are supposed to be able to facilitate those kind of meetings. And it's, it's since they are being uh, voted by the, the, the other uh, member of the community, or well, the other member of the community, like, find that they will be agreeing <laughs> for them to lead those kind of meetings. Yeah. If it's something like, if, for example, if I lead a meeting and three quarters of the members who <laughs> are sitting there are like, disagree completely with what I decide or I choose or the way I talk. They could like decide like you you've been like just reject from the from the administrative board. It's not like it's like a process. It's always changing. It's not we're not there for a long time. It does sound like you have even more um, layers to your structure, like the administrative board, you have like a, a maintenance and grounds. Yes, every and every every business has their own board and every <coughs> services like for example the people that are working in the kitchen and are duty around <coughs> they have their own little team for decision. And the people that are working on construction or restoration of building they have their own team that will take their decision. And if it's something that requires a decision uh, regarding finance, well, they brought it to the finance committee. So one of them will bring it, the, the project to the finance committee. So it's, it's, it sounds like a lot of process it and is. time it and is. patience. And yes. what, how, how do you deal with, like, slackers? <laughs> in that old, old schematic, like what if, what if you have like someone who's sort of not pulling their weight in that whole scenario? 
How do you resolve that? Well, um, using the nonviolent communication, <laughs> and also what we encourage people to do uh, since they are very little is to choose in the community like three person that you think they are your friends, <laughs> and you think that those people you'll be agree and accept when they are coming and tap on your shoulders and say, well, you need to adjust, or do you want to talk, or you need to, you have three people in the community that you can like, probably that be confident, and you can get some... Uh, Mentorship. Yeah. Okay. Mentors. Mentors, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, so that's... That's one way. That's yeah. a way, that's a way, and there's like, you know, situation that there's some extreme situation, and you know, there's if if it's someone that it's been like running over, running over in his. Have you asked people issue. to leave? <laughs> yeah, we can ask people to leave. Yeah. Like, if it's like bringing all down the energy of the community, well, yes. We, is we that can. is that like an eighty percent then? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. But for that, yes. How long does that process take? Or be rejected, or to, to be yeah. <laughs> to make someone leave. Is Depends on the, the people. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say those situations are delicate, True. delicate situation, and it's not something that happens very often. It's like it's funny because two years ago, when I began to do the tours of the community, and I had those questions about nonviolent communication. That's a term I learned, but I didn't know it was existing. Like, it's something we use without having a term on it. Like, since the beginning, it was the concept of living in harmony and creating an environment that, that promotes harmony. But nonviolent communication is just, for me, just a term. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's a nice term. <laughs> yes. Oh, how far exactly apart? Um, two echo villages. Depends who's driving. <laughs> but I do it in one hour and a half. But it's one hour to two hours. Depends. I see. <laughs> Where do you go in between with an hour and two? How oh, fast? You're in the middle of an hour and a half? An hour and a half. An hour and a half. It's, a, it's when is well, when is summer? Summer is sunny. Mm -hmm. We don't have a tractor. It's a load of <laughs> yes. Have you had community decisions where maybe three fourths of the people were in favor of it, but it didn't reach that eighty percent consensus threshold yet? Usually, mm -hmm. what we try to really do after a member assembly is really to take a decision. Mm -hmm. If we go to uh, that right. kind of situation that we are not able to decide right. something, we will vote of taking that question for the next meeting. Okay. But we need to decide something. So we need to end the meeting with something. So it could happen, but it's something that we just take some more time to think about it. And, maybe. and, and the next meeting probably some, some, someone will, will bring another idea, will change his mind. Yes? Do you, if you have something that gets tabled for the next meeting, mm -hmm. is there much difficulty between members with somebody pressuring other people to vote a certain way, or how does that feel? Uh, not usually. Okay. What What is decided on the meeting, and when it's vote, you don't talk about it after the meeting. Okay. We're supposed to keep it for the meeting. So there's no, like... There is always some, but <laughs> we're not supposed to do so. And, and also what we try to do in, in our meeting is to use uh, the first person, like, I think it's something. That, well, if someone uh, was doing that, it will be better. No, I think it will be better if we act in that way, or we do that project. We try really to put the decision on our shoulders and what we think of to be re more responsible about that. Yes? Um, does the school curriculum, is it 
different each year depending on who's involved or is it the same each year and also is it like separated by grades or depends you... in Quebec they are following like the curriculum in Quebec because they are the the school we have in Quebec it's not a private school it's like a branch of the the public school so we get budget from the school to pay for our teacher in New Hampshire, we have our own private school, and we approve for attendance only, K to 12. So we don't, we are not required to have a program. Now we have a program of a, a basic program that we have that we are presenting to the New Hampshire uh, yeah, <laughs> Education Board yeah. or whatever. Uh, but um, but after that, yes, we can do whatever depends on the people who are in the school. So but it's free flowing. It's more, more so it's more free. Yeah. It's it's really more open uh, in New Hampshire than in Quebec. And the board is built with the parents. So that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Like what we want for our children is what they will teach and it's what our children will reach. If you want if you want your children to have his uh, GD or have his SAT or go to college, well, you ask the, the, the group of teachers to teach him to go to those. Some of the parents, they are not, they, they are not pushing, so it's a choice. How long of a process was it to create the school legally? I did that with my husband in 2007. I think it takes uh, Six months about That's not too bad. Six months after he took some well he wasn't an <laughs> he was an electric engineer. So he needs to get his uh, certification to become a teacher, certified teacher to be able to be accredited by the school. So you need to have one accredited teacher in your school at least. To have one one who's become the principal and that will be approved by the teacher. Um, do you have any programs for low-income families that would want to be a part of the Eco Village but don't necessarily pay? I think it's a, a, I would say yes, but low-income, with if you're part of the Eco Village, you, know, you will find probably your place within one of our businesses that will you won't be a low income anymore. <laughs> that depends. Yeah. Has yeah. that ever happened before? Or... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yes. Yes. So every situation is unique. So we try to have a overall uh, board, but every situation is very unique. Like for instance, this summer, usually we have a uh, the green uh, weekend that we offer to family to participate, and it's like uh, one. It's $50 per adult per day. It would be at $200 per for a weekend. But for this summer, we're offering like that weekend free for families who ask to come and visit. So yes, we try to encourage also family to, yeah. to come and experience that environment. And also, it's something that like we don't have a lot of children in the school, so it's something nice to have more children to come over and, and participate in this activity. So we try to do classes uh, with the school, but it's nothing like having a friends every day that like you can sleep over. And, and crazy thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The other um, eco villages, do they have a similar financial structure that they, um, I mean, like your every every eco village is different. Mm -hmm. I visit a few, and it's not you can. It's hard to compare. It's like every eco village is different, and we have that often, like. Can we come to your eco village and can you be our consultant to start an eco village? Mm -hmm. well, we can talk about our history, but it's hard to cons to be consultant for something that it will really take it, it place within the members who would start and work as a member of that new community. It's like it's not possible. We can fit our community into others <laughs> others' minds like 
Because I noticed that it looks like many of the jobs that your members have mm -hmm. are in, you know, some kind of sustainable, um, uh, sustainable living, whether that's the, um, energy, you know, the solar panels mm -hmm. or some of those other things. So is that a common thing? In well, we try to turn uh, to have a uh, ethic uh, to be more sustainable and depending on those values. Like for for a lot of people that are visiting, like Kiev International is not sustainable at all. And what we try to do with this, since we are a uh, shipping business, we ship a lot. Like we are the biggest uh, the biggest um, customer of FedEx <laughs> in, the, in, the, in this area. But what we try to do is like one uh, the, the main buyer is like making sure that the condition of work. Uh, where we purchase our product from Indonesia or Peru mm -hmm. or whatever, e e visiting the shops and make sure that they have good condition of work. So we're not furniture simplified, but it's like a face-to-face furniture certification. Mm -hmm. So that's something uh, Kiosk do. Also, we plant like trees in Bali to offset a little bit of carbon footprint and stuff like that. So we do as, as we can. <laughs> Gosh, I think it works out. <laughs> I'm not sure we have any more questions. I think everything's answered. Yes.